Les vrais musulmans respectent toute vie et c'est une prescription de l'islam. Donc euh, si M. Benzema, parce qu'il est éminemment français, y compris s'il habite, habite en Arabie Saoudite désormais, est capable de montrer que devant 20 millions de gens qui le suivent, eh ben, il pleure également la mort de ce professeur, mais je retirerai mes propos. Et je constate que pour l'instant, jusqu'à preuve du contraire, il a fait le choix extrêmement sélectif de porter le même discours que les frères musulmans. October 15th, 2023. Karim Benzema is on his phone. The former Ballon d'Or and French international is sad and worried. The humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip is getting worse by the hour. Touched deeply by what he has seen on his news feeds, Benzema goes on to X to share his sentiment. All our prayers for the inhabitants of Gaza, victims once again of these unjust bombardments that spare neither women nor children. Benzema probably guessed that his feelings may not be mutual, but he couldn't have possibly imagined that people in high places would take his compassion as an act of treason. Since the beginning of his career, Benzema has had a delicate relationship with French politics, especially that of the right wing. But getting linked to a terrorist organization by the French interior minister of all people marked a new low in this already tumultuous relationship. Gerald Darmanin, a man who was an unknown figure among football fans until his questionable allegations against Liverpool fans concerning their horrific UEFA Champions League final match day experience last year in Paris, has once again rekindled the seemingly unending debate of Benzema versus France, a debate that went from zero to 60 in record time. 60 representing a member of the French Senate asking the government to remove Benzema's French citizenship. How come one of the biggest footballing stars of this generation found himself at the centerpiece of debates on Islamic fundamentalism? Since when and why is his loyalty and respect for France in question? Who are the people benefiting from him, stealing the headlines over such accusations? What's his response to criticism and accusations? And how could the rest of this story unfold? Welcome back to Football Files. Today, we're taking a closer look at the curious case of Benzema versus the French government. C'est pas parce que je vais chanter la Marseillaise que derrière je vais mettre un triplé. Je chante pas la Marseillaise. Le match il commence, je mets trois buts. À la fin du match, on va pas dire il a pas chanté la Marseillaise. March 2013. Real Madrid's 25-year-old star forward Karim Benzema is trying to put an end to the rumors about his alleged distaste for playing for the French national team. People need to calm down. I love Les Bleus. Playing for the national team is a dream for me, says Benzema. This is neither the first time, nor will it be the last that he feels obligated to express his feelings towards his home country. Born in Lyon to Algerian parents Benzema's whole life, before and even after he found worldwide fame, has been a constant back and forth between him being French, and on occasion, French with Algerian origins. He's not the only one with a similar backstory. Yet his case remains particularly interesting because, as he points it out, he's not the only Les Bleu player who refused to sing the national anthem. Legends like Zinedine Zidane and Michel Platini never sang it either. Maybe the fact that he was always open about his sentiments is the problem. In an interview published in the Spanish version of Vanity Fair, Benzema said, if you listen to it carefully, La Marseillaise calls for war and I don't like that or maybe because he categorically refused to become an easy target, and that didn't go well with the establishment. Back in 2016, when the former Prime Minister Manuel Valls called him out by saying that he wasn't an exemplary sportsman for the youth, he had almost instantaneously fired back with a tweet. It's been 12 years since I turned professional. 541 matches played, zero red cards, 11 yellow cards. And some people talk about my exemplarity? Granted, KB9 didn't cover himself in glory a few years down the line when he was found guilty in the sex tape extortion scandal involving his Les Bleus teammate, Mathieu Valbuena. But the fact of the matter remained the same. Karim Benzema has always been a nuisance for the French political classes. But the latest addition made by Gerald Darmanin to the ongoing Benzema versus France debate is different because it not only concerns Karim Benzema and his close circle, but also the future of France. Act 1. Notorious Links Benzema was doing nothing out of the ordinary. The Frenchman was in his corner, minding his own business, doing his best to take his fairly new team, al Ittihad to a better place in the Saudi Pro League. But then, he got yanked into yet another bizarre situation. Making an appearance on CNews, a French TV channel that's known for its right-wing tendencies, the interior minister, Gerald Darmanin, casually added the Frenchman into the debate he was having about the threat of Islamic fundamentalism in France. Monsieur Benzema est en lien, on le sait tous, notoire avec les frères musulmans. Nous attaquons à une hydre qui sont les frères musulmans parce qu'ils donnent un djihadisme d'atmosphère. It was clear that the minister wasn't happy about Benzema's tweet about what has been happening in the Gaza Strip. But his allegations about notorious links were not words uttered in the heat of the moment. In a media briefing made after the initial accusation, Darmanin's team further elaborated in what was clearly an even bigger salvo. 
For several years, we have noted a slow drift in Karim Benzema's positions towards a hard, rigorous Islam, characteristic of the Brotherhood ideology, consisting of disseminating Islamic norms in different spaces of society, particularly in sport. Among the examples of Benzema's notoriety, according to the Interior Minister's entourage, were once again refusal to sing La Marseillaise and proselytism on social networks around Muslim worship, such as fasting, prayer, and pilgrimage to Mecca. Clearly, Team Darmanin slept on the fact that fasting Benzema is one of, if not the greatest striker the beautiful game has ever seen. Jokes aside, though, apparently, in Benzema's case, overtly living in accordance with one's religion was a suspicious activity at the very least. The fact that Benzema now plays in Saudi Arabia was also picked up by the interior minister as a way of further approaching the forward. However, the Hydra that is the Muslim Brotherhood is not considered a terrorist group in France, and it is considered a terrorist group by Saudi Arabia. So the minister's efforts to find a causality between Benzema moving to Saudi Arabia and his ties getting stronger with the Brotherhood was not that fruitful. Act 2. That escalated quickly. Darmanin's claims received a varied reaction, but they sure provided the far right an opportunity to seize. Senator Valerie Boyer said if the alleged ties are proven to be accurate, Benzema should be stripped of both his 2022 Ballon d'Or and his French citizenship. Nadine Morano, a member of the European Parliament, described Benzema as an element of Hamas propaganda. The man who took the whole conversation to another level was Eric Zemmour, the founder and leader of the far-right political party Reconcate. Claiming that Karim Benzema is not a French citizen by heart, and that he doesn't and has never really loved France. Zemmour tied Benzema directly to the assassins of Dominique Bernard and Samuel Paty, two teachers who were murdered by Islamist terrorists. Am I making a link between the opinions of Karim Benzema and the assassins? Absolutely! All these people think that Sharia is a divine path, and Sharia law provides, among other things, jihad, which is the holy war against the unfaithful. The infidels are you and me trying to portray a jihadist terrorist from a football player while building the entire argument around a compassionate tweet from the said player is a bit of an overkill, don't you think? Act 3, The Backlash The man in the eye of the storm, to the delight of so many people online, didn't even bother responding to any of the claims himself, no matter how wild they became. Instead, he asked his lawyer, Hughes Vigier, to step in. Now, Vigier is exploring the possibilities of suing his client's accusers, including the interior minister. Aside from this professional and calculated response, though the Frenchman, quite expectedly, is devastated. Je passe mon temps à faire l'objet de dénonciations assez ignobles par des gens qui ne me connaissent pas et que je crois profondément injustes. Mais après tout, c'est ma vie. Je suis une personnalité exposée. Je peux euh, éventuellement non pas le comprendre, mais, mais imaginer que c'est inévitable. En revanche, ce que je vois, c'est que mes enfants sont profondément meurtris de, de lire, d'entendre qu'on traiterait leur père de terroriste. Et ça, c'est d'une violence inouïe. C'est le résultat de propos inconsidérés, inadmissibles, d'un ministre de l'Intérieur notamment. Granted, Benzema is under the weather, but violent accusations are not the only things coming his way. Figures from even the far right blame Darmanin of trying to pull off a political diversion, where the far left straight up accused the interior minister of creating a racist controversy. Asked about his take on the matter, the president of French Football Federation, Philippe Diallo, who is obviously not a political figure, came up with an explanation that was much more calm and collected than that of political figures. Stating his desire to not enter into the debate and telling that Benzema, as a football player, is one of the greatest French players the world has seen as far as he is concerned. Diallo said that he must be free to express his opinions like everyone else in the country. Je me suis déjà même exprimé publiquement pour dire que les footballeurs, c'est des citoyens comme les autres, ils ont le droit d'avoir des avis comme les autres, et qu'à ce titre-là, s'ils ont besoin de s'exprimer sur un certain nombre de thématiques, c'est tout à fait naturel. With that being said, we've come to the end of this episode. But as you can probably tell by now, the back and forth action between Benzema and the French authorities is likely to continue. Do you think Karim Benzema is fairly treated? Would you consider his online activities a nuisance? Be sure to let us know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.